the blind spots of the farm to fork targets. In 2020, the EU launched a set of communications on strategies for transitioning to a more sustainable food system. The two main strategies to achieve this goal are the farm to fork and the biodiversity strategies, part of a greater agenda, the EU Green Deal. These strategies propose a number of quantified targets to support Europe's long-term goal for climate neutrality by 2050. These targets include 50% reduction in the use of plant protection products, 50% reduction in nutrient losses and 20% reduction in the use of fertilizers, 50% reduction in antimicrobials used for farmed animals, 10% of farmland removed from production, 25% of cultivated land under organic farming. All by 2030. Setting targets is expected in any strategy. But how do they translate for European farmers, for consumers, or for the desired reduction of GHG emissions? Usually, in order to answer such questions, the European Commission conducts impact assessments, a standard EU procedure included in the principles of good governance. However, the European Commission has so far refused to undertake and publish such a study, and its first impact assessments are not expected before 2022. In the meantime, the policy process has started in the European Parliament, where additional proposals have been added to the initial draft strategies. In parallel, since summer 2021, various independent and academic studies have been published. These studies have limits, and they do not replace the work that the Commission services should produce. However, they increase our knowledge, display complementary views, and highlight common trends regardless of the model they use. Here is a summary of their findings. Trend 1. EU food production will decrease. The US Department of Agriculture USDA study first predicted a net decline of 12% of European food production. This report was later backed up by a technical report of the European Joint Research Centre predicting a 15% decline in pig and poultry production, a 14% decline in cattle production and an 11% decline in milk production. In the crop sector, JRC researchers predict an 8-26% to drop in wheat production, 8-22% to for corn and 10-24% to for oil seeds. We often forget that Europe both produces for its internal market and supports food security around the globe thanks to exports. According to the USDA study, the farm-to-fork strategy could increase the number of food insecure people by an additional 22 million in 2030. Trend 2. Food prices in Europe will increase substantially. A decrease in crop and livestock production, even if one considers dietary changes, will have significant implications for consumers due to higher food price. According to the University of Kiel, the implementation of the farm-to-fork strategy as it stands would lead to adjustment costs financed by consumers with an estimated consumer welfare loss of 70 billion euro. In other words, a family of four would have to pay an additional 630 euros per year for food. According to the JRC and USDA studies, we will see food price increases between 12 and 17 percent. Projections show that meat products will experience the highest consumer price increases at around 20 percent. On top of this, the European Parliament 
proposes taxes aiming at limiting the consumption of certain high carbon emitting products. There is therefore a risk of creating a two-tier food system. 3. The EU agri-food trade balance would deteriorate sharply. According to the JRC and Kiel University studies, the EU will increase its dependency on beef, sheep and goat meats when it comes to livestock products. The EU will remain a net exporter for poultry and pork, but foresee a significant decrease in this exporting capacity. Only dairy products should expect a limited increase in exports. On the crop side, cereals would be highly impacted. For Kiel University, we will become net importers of grains, while our dependency on oil seeds and fruits and vegetables will increase. So, while the EU is discussing strategic autonomy following the Covid crisis, and while activists are asking for a change in diet towards more plant-based foods, it's difficult to understand how the farm-to-fork strategy will really help to fulfil these goals. Trend 4. EU farmers' incomes will be impacted. The studies published indicate a clear trend. According to the JRC study, cereal and oilseed farms and, to a lesser extent, vegetable farms will experience a drop in income of 26% and 5% respectively, an outcome confirmed by Kiel University. On the livestock side, farmers would see their incomes increased due to substantially higher consumer prices for meat products. However, a more recent study by Wageningen University predicts the opposite trend with decreasing livestock farm incomes. By 2030, European agriculture will face a need for a new generation of farmers. If we want the farming business to remain attractive and to change our food consumption patterns, the EU must allow young farmers to make a decent living from both crop and livestock production. Trend 5. Positive climate impacts may be limited. A key objective of the Green Deal is reducing greenhouse gas emissions from agriculture. According to the JRC and Kiel University studies, the proposed strategies will reduce agricultural emissions by about 30% in Europe. However, both studies also show that around 50% of the gains obtained in Europe will be offset by emission transfers to third countries through increased import of food no longer produced in the EU. The Kiel University study goes further and considers that the decline of our production will impact both Europe and third countries. In this context, the farm-to-fork strategy would have an extremely limited impact on the global level of agricultural emissions. Another striking point is the contradictory nature of the EU presenting its farm-to-fork strategy while signing a trade agreement with Mercosur countries facilitating the import of products that will reinforce carbon leakage effects. Conclusion In view of the above findings, all agricultural stakeholders are calling for an urgent and comprehensive impact study of the farm-to-fork and biodiversity strategies. Separate impact studies for each specific target, as proposed by the Commission, will not be satisfactory given these would not consider the cumulative effects of the targets at stake. A comprehensive study would support an open and true debate on the nature of farm-to-fork and carbon leakage effects, the possibility of a two-speed food system or a growing division between rural and urban territories. Rather than limiting cultivated land and farm inputs, Europe should focus on result-oriented targets, promote solutions and tools and incentivize farmers and agricultural cooperatives to improve their environmental footprint through greater farming efficiency while allowing production to thrive.